Okay, good morning everyone. Um, welcome to the revision analysis lecture. Um, this lecture, uh, the session for today will be based mostly on this book by Mendenhall and Sinchich, a second course in statistics, seventh edition. Okay, so for today, we will be discussing the last part, or not really the last part, that is, um, yeah, next to the last part of chapter four of this book, that is a test for comparing nested models. Okay, so before we proceed to the procedure of comparing nested model, first we need to know what is nested model, why do we need to do comparison for nested models, and then... Um, and then we end up with, okay, what conclusion can we get from uh, comparing these nested models? So why we need to do the um, nested uh, test, I think it is motivated by the problem of um, inflated um, error when we do partial t-test repeatedly as shown here. In this page, okay, at the footnote here is that okay, let's say we have a multiple regression model with 10 variables, and then if we want to know that whether each of those variables are contributing to explain why or not, to explain the response variable or not, then we tend to um, do the test for each of the uh, uh, coefficient for each of the variable and then we will do 10 um, t tests um, independently okay and then when we do that then the type 1 error that is the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is actually true is no longer 0.05 as we said before but it is inflated to around 40.1%, which is very big. It's kind of like a big probability of making a mistake. So that's why the result of doing, you know, several times of independent tests um, is not really recommended. And that's why we look for other ways of testing several variables, whether they need to be included in the model or not. Um, but not by doing the uh, t-test uh, several times okay so that's why we go back to the um, test itself so that's the motivation of doing the comparison of the nested model and what is actually nested model nested model is kind of like just from the word nest itself then one model is included or nested in the other model the nesting one is called um, is the simpler model, and then the bigger model, the complete one, is a should contain all the terms that in the simple model, and with some other. Um, terms like in here. The simpler model, the simpler model, is just up to the uh, what is it? Um, uh, interaction term, and uh, a more complete model is the up to the um, quadratic uh, form. Okay. So then, in case that we want to know whether we really need to put in the quadratic terms or not then actually we want to know whether x beta 1 equals 0 and beta 5 equals 0 but then remember we don't want to do the partial t test repeatedly so we want to test this simultaneously okay so this should be our null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis is at least one of them is not zero then we need to calculate something to decide on which hypothesis is supported by the data. Is it the null hypothesis or is it the alternative hypothesis? So then it is given here. So 
we have the test statistics is the drop in the sum squared error divided by the number of parameters being tested. And then the whole thing, again, we compare it with the variance of the larger model or the sum squared error for the larger um, now, this R, R squared is the mean squared error for the larger model. Okay, so why is it like that? We just uh, try to understand the logic behind it. So then, I will just write it here. Okay, so then, I will just retype what we have before. We have that a complete model that expected of y equals to beta naught beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus beta 3 x 1 x 2 that is the interaction term and then with the um, quadratic term, beta 4 x 1 squared plus beta 5 x 2 squared. Okay, that's the complete model, and we just copy this and then paste it here. And then the nesting model or the simpler model simpler model is that okay we take out this one okay remember when we discuss about the coefficient of determination you know from this one okay it has like let's say this model has the uh, sum squared error of and we say it's sum squared error one and then um, sum squared error one and then if it is divided by degrees of freedom is the uh, S1 squared, that is the mean squared error. This is the mean squared error one, okay? Sum squared error one, if it is divided by the degrees of freedom, okay? So then, and here we have that it has sum squared error as well, and then we denote it by sum squared error too. Which one do you think is larger? Is it sum squared error 1 or sum squared error 2? The idea is that the increasing of information given by this, you know, then you will get, uh, you expect to get a more accurate model which means that it will reduce the error and of course reduce the sum squared error. So in here we have that sum squared error 2 of course is smaller than sum squared error 1. Okay, so, so then, and again, if these two, what makes it different between these two models is from these two components right from these two terms okay if these two terms are really contributing well in explaining why that you know um increment of these uh what is it make the sum squared error is smaller compared to when these two components are not in here and if they are really good it means that you know the work of these two, for, let's say, is kind of like uh, dominating uh, the work of the whole thing in the model. Okay, so that's the idea from here, the formulation here. So then, if they are really should be. Uh, uh, if they should stay in the model, then when you take them out, then there will be increase, uh, incre increasing in the sum squared error. Or when you put them in, 
then there will be decreasing in the sum squared error so we look at the drop in the sum squared error okay and then actually you can just look at here at the drop in the sum squared error and then okay let's say the drop is 5 or the drop is 10 is it big enough it's up to you to say it it is big or not but we can't measure the error of making uh, of stating that it is big or it is not big enough so we need to compare it with the reference um, that is some uh, standard distribution so we need to find what is how is this value distributed okay from a uh, theory in mathematical statistics we have that we know that from the uh, quadratic form uh, the ratio of two quadratic form each divided by its standard or its uh, degrees of freedom um, will result in a new dis distribution that is the f distribution so that's why we not only looking at the drop of the s uh, the sum squared error but we also compared it with the other quadratic form in this case is the mean squared error for larger model okay so what value of f do we expect if uh, the complete model is preferred okay that leads to the rejection of the null hypothesis okay so if you want to prevent the complete model then it should be these two should be very good and then it means that the drop in the sum squared error should be big okay so the numbers up here we expect to be big enough something else and it's here it is the mean squared error um, for larger model and then for larger model we know that the larger model the larger the model the smaller the uh, sum squared error which means that the smaller the mean squared error okay so then we want this number up here to be kind of like big and then we want the number down here to be like small so then big numbers divided by the smaller numbers of course after adjusted by the degrees of freedom then we want the value of f to be big that one will lead to the rejection of the null hypothesis okay so that's how we get the rule in here okay so f here the degrees of freedom is the number of beta states divided by the mean squared error of the complete model and then we reject the null hypothesis when the value the f value is greater than the value from um, the referencing uh, distribution that is the f with um, the first degree of freedom is that the number of betas to be tested the second degree of freedom is that the degrees of freedom of the complete model that is the sample size minus the number of parameters um, regression coefficient in that model okay so that's why that's how we get that we expect a larger value of f leads to the rejection of the null hypothesis okay now we look at the example here in example 4.8 okay okay the shipment cost package weight and distance shipped okay maybe we can have a look at example example 4.8 remember this is page 244 okay oh it's not there okay um i don't want to go back there but then we'll just have a look at this so here we have that a straight line or a reduced model 6.63 second complete order model so then i guess that if it says that okay it says that the reduced model 
is that the straight line interaction model so it's like this one because it's just two variables there are only two variables uh, explanatory variables they are uh, segment the y the weight that is x1 distance shift is x2 okay so then this is the simple model this is the uh, complete model okay so it has the the uh, for the reduced model the sum squared error it means that for this one is that point uh, six point six three 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 one and then for the complete model we see here that it's smaller way smaller is two point seven four four seven four seems like you know the increasing by adding these two quadratic terms it reduced the sum squared error by like um, 67 percent 2.7 is kind of like a third of this one so i might guess that probably we should put the uh, quadratic um, term but we never know whether the reduction is significant enough compared to you know the complexity of the model so then this is the hypothesis and then this is the f statistics again sum squared error the mean squared error for the complete model is the sum squared error divided by the degrees of freedom and the degrees of freedom is since we have sample size of 20 and then here in the complete model we have up to beta 5 so there are six coefficients including beta naught that's why here we have 20 minus 6 and then we have f is 9.92 compare it with the f from table or we can just do it online here okay i just do it online here like f calculator and then here we have the first degree of freedom is 2 the second degree of freedom is 14 and then the alpha is 0.05 so the cumulative is that one so there we go we got from the table is 3.74 and then we compare this what we get from the calculation 9.92 is way bigger than 3.74 that's why the null hypothesis is rejected and we say that the quadratic terms should be included in the model just like uh, we can guess from here okay the radar because the reduction in the sum squared error is quite big okay so that's how we do the um what is it the uh, nested f test nested model test and remember we have you know Another motivation of doing this is that because in statistics, we prefer to have a parsimonious model. A parsimonious model is that a simple model, but still accurate. So we want it to be as simple as possible, yet to be as accurate as possible. Okay, so if we can have a simpler model, but the accuracy is not really uh, different with the complete model then we prefer to have a simpler model and uh, to get that simpler model we try to you know um, take out some variables and then instead of doing it one by one that's how we do the nested test okay i think that's all for this session thank you for your attention